Hey everybody, this is Patrick GMT and I'm partnering with Chegg, and here we're going to talk about the conic sections. So we'll talk about parabolas, and for parabolas we'll talk about the focus and the directrix, and then we'll also talk about ellipses and hyperbolas. So the reason, again, they're called conic sections, you can imagine like you have uh, two cones here where the tips are touching. The idea is, depending on how, you could take like a little piece of paper or imagine taking like a little slice, depending on how you, you slice it, you're going to get different objects. And so, for example, if I took a slice that wasn't quite horizontal, you know, if my sheet of paper wasn't quite horizontal, if it was at an angle, we would end up getting an ellipse. And you can cut things in different ways, again, to get these different shapes. So that's why they're called conic sections. But we'll talk about definitions of, of all of these things as well. Okay, so let's start with parabolas. So a parabola is a set of points in a plane that are equidistant from a fixed point, which is called the focus. So here's my focus. And a fixed line, which is known as the directrix. So here you can see my directrix. So again, the basic idea is if I, for example, if I take this point, if I look at the distance from that point to the focus, it's going to be the exact same distance as, let's try to make that, hor that vertical line look a little bit a little better. These two distances are going to be exactly the same. And if we do this for all points in the plane that satisfy that, well, we'll get our parabola. So an equation of the parabola with a focus at the point 0 comma p and director x y equals negative p is going to be x squared equals 4p times y. So if you have this form, x squared equals 4p times y, if your p-value is positive, the parabola is going to open upwards. If the p-value is negative, your parabola is going to open downwards. And your parabolas don't have to just open upwards or downwards, right? They can open to the left or to the right. So the same thing. If the focus is at the point p comma 0 and the directrix is the line x equals negative p, we're going to have this form y squared equals 4px. And again, if the p value is positive, it opens to the right. If it's negative, it opens to the left. So a pretty straightforward example here. We'll find the focus and directrix of y squared plus 12x equals 0. So I want to put it in that form so I can subtract 12x from both sides. So I already know I have this form y squared equals 4px. Well, we can write that I can write this as 4 times negative 3. That'll give me my negative 12, still multiplied by x. Well, in this case, I've picked out my p-value. So it says our p-value is going to be equal to uh, negative 3. So our focus, we said for these forms, it's going to, the focus will look like the form p comma 0. So the focus will be at negative 3 comma 0. And the directrix directrix is going to be the line x equals positive 3. And you could graph this really quickly if you wanted to. So the focus would be over here at negative 3. Uh, the directrix here is x equals positive 3. And an equation, uh, y squared equals negative 12x. Again, that's going to be a parabola opening to the left. So nothing, nothing too crazy, I think, on these. Again, you're just putting it in that 4p times x or y, depending on which one it is, just again to find that directrix and the focus. So an ellipse. An ellipse is a set of points in a plane, uh, the sum of whose distances from two fixed points called the foci. So here's my foci is a constant. So again, the same idea. If I pick a point on my ellipse, I can add those two links together, right? I'll add this length and this length. I'll get some number. Well, the idea is if I pick, you know, another point on my ellipse, Maybe I'll use a different color here. If I take this distance and this distance and add them together, I'm going to get the same combined distance we did previously. So that's going to be the, the definition of an ellipse. Again, there's a couple different forms de uh, depending on whether your, your ellipse kind of is, is longer uh, horizontally or if it's longer vertically. And I've got all those forms jotted down, so I'll, I uh, will let you look at those. Um, I'm not going to read all these to you, but we'll, do, we'll use one of these in an example. So let's find the, an equation for the ellipse that has foci at plus minus 2 comma 0 and vertices at positive negative 5 comma 0. Okay, so we didn't ask for a graph here, but I'm going to make one anyway. So the vertices are at negative 5 and positive 5, and the foci... 
the photos I don't really, you know, they're not part of the graph, so I don't know how you would want to label them. I always just put little X's there. You can ask your instructor if they're if they have a, uh, you know, some some other way for you to do it. Okay, so in this case, so I know my foci are uh, at positive neg negative two comma zero. The vertices are at positive negative five comma zero. So I know that I'm going to be using this form of the ellipse. Okay, so I know it's going to be x squared over some number plus y squared over some number equals 1. Well, notice the vertices, if they're occurring at plus minus a, we take that value and square it. That's what goes underneath x squared. So in this case, again, we know the vertices are at positive negative 5. So take, it doesn't matter which of those values, take it and square it. We'll end up with 5 squared or 25 at the end of the day. Now, the only thing I'm missing now is this, uh, the value that goes under my y squared term. But again, we have this relationship that says that c squared equals a squared minus b squared. So c squared equals a squared minus b squared. Our vertices correspond to our a value. We know that our um, foci are at positive negative 2 comma 0. So that's going to be um, 2 squared. And that's going to equal 5 squared or 25 minus b squared. OK, so we can do a little bit of arithmetic here. I can add the b squared to both sides. This will be equal to 4. If we do 25 minus 4, that's going to leave us with 21. That's going to be the value that's going to go underneath the y squared term. And of course, if you wanted to, you could write, you know, this is 5 squared and the square root of 21 squared if you really want to see it exactly um, in that form. Okay, so again, one thing I want to point out too, the vertices, this is a terrible looking little ellipse. The vertices <clears throat> are the points along the, again, the major axis. So this one is definitely wider than it is tall. So that's why the vertices are um, these points. If you wanted to know the values of, you know, sort of the, the highest y value and the lowest y value, it's going to, again, come from taking the square root of that number underneath y squared. So you would be at a height positive square root of 21, and this would be uh, the y coordinate of negative square root of 21. Okay, so again, nothing, nothing too crazy. Uh, one little common mistake here before I jump into the next one. Uh, Compare these formulas with the ones that we're about to see because there's a lot of similarity, but definitely some differences. <clears throat> okay, so hyperbolas. A hyperbola is a set of all points in the plane, the differences of whose distances from two fixed points, again known as the foci, is a constant. So here's my one foci, my other first foci. You can imagine taking a point um, on one of the ellipses, if I look at the distance, if I look at the difference between those two distances, so take the bigger length minus the smaller length, I'm going to get some number. And the idea is if I, you know, pick some other random point and do that, if I take the long length minus the short length, again, we're going to get that same value. So it's similar to an ellipse, except for now, except we're looking at the, uh, when we're adding those distances for an ellipse where it's constant, here we're subtracting them to get uh, the difference to be a constant. So again, a lot of different formulas here. Notice if it's of the form x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared equals 1. That's when it opens to the left and opens to the right. If we have the form y squared equals a squared minus x squared over b squared equals 1, that's when it's going to open to uh, open upwards and open downwards. And again, you can see the similarity. The, the foci will be in slightly different places, either along the x-axis or the y-axis. Same thing with the vertices. One thing that's useful when you're graphing these is to find the asymptotes. These are going to be slant asymptotes. So your graph is going to get closer and closer to those asymptotes. So these are kind of like little guideposts, and I, I like, to, like to find those. So doing that, let's find the foci and the asymptotes of this, this, uh, this 4x squared minus 25y squared equals 100. So again, okay, I know that it's going to be, I've got an x squared minus y squared. So it's going to be of this form. I just need to make the right side into a positive 1. Well, I could do that just by dividing both sides by 100. 4x squared over 100 would leave me with x squared over 25. Minus, okay, 25 over 100, that would leave me with y squared over 4 
equals one. And now, okay, so we can use our formulas. So again, we know our, we know our um, a squared and our b squared. So to get the, the foci, it says c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So c squared is going to equal 25 plus 4, which is going to be equal to 29. So c is going to equal positive negative 29. So that tells us again that our foci are going to be at positive negative 29 comma 0. And, okay, so the other thing we want to do is find the asymptotes. So here we use the, the asymptotes, we use y equals plus minus b over a. So we do the b value over the a value. But notice we need to have those squared, so I can rewrite those real quick. So I could rewrite 25, I can rewrite 4. So I could write 25 as uh, 5 squared, I can write 4 as 2 squared. So now you can find the asymptotes. The asymptotes are simply going to be y equals positive negative. We take 2 and divide that by 5. So 2 fifths multiplied by x. So we're going to get two, again, two slanted lines that our graph will get closer to. So okay, um, you know, as long as you can remember these formulas, I think a lot of these, if you're just working with, you know, pretty straightforward hyperbolas, ellipses, parabolas, there's really nothing too tricky, you know. One thing I would keep in mind, notice like a hyperbola has a minus between, but to find the to find the foci, there's a plus in the formula. The ellipse formula was opposite of that, right? There's a plus in the formula, but when we go to find the foci, we take the difference of that a squared and b squared. So again, a, a few similarities, um, but uh, just make sure you're getting signs correct because I think if, you, if, you, if somebody made a common mistake, it would just sort of getting those formulas mixed up.